Welcome to part two of a four-part series, Fundamentals in Team Building. In part one, Five Tips to Stay Alive, we discuss the importance of keeping your heroes up and giving you tips on how to do so. In part two, we will be going over the following. What are your three base stats? Why focus is the most effective when your offensive base stat is at 90. And finally, tier listing the final four luxury stats. Let's get started. Your base stats get broken down into two different categories. Uh, the first one that you have is defensive, which is your armor and resistance. Pretty much what you want to do is throughout the game is you want to increase your resistance and your armor. Armor blocks physical damage and um, resistance blocks magical damage. And the second category is offensive. Now, typically each hero, you will want to focus one of your offensive stats. You don't want to increase all four of them. In fact, it's like next to impossible to increase all four of them. And that is intelligence, awareness, strength, and talent. When we talk about increasing one of those four is pretty much what that means is you have three total stats for your base stats. Now, as you keep progressing in the game, again, you want to keep increasing armor and resistance, but there becomes a cutoff point in your offensive stat to get that to 90. And that pretty much is what I'm talking about when you're wanting to apply the rule of 90. There are going to be times where you're going to sacrifice one of your three base stats. So you're going to sacrifice some armor, you're going to sacrifice some resistance, or you're going to sacrifice potentially some of your offensive stats to where it drops below the threshold of 90. What you can see is in the, the upper right corner is the breakdown of the different stats. So it starts off by having 34, 52, and then 92 for the intelligent. Of course, that's a little above the 90, which means I'd be willing to sacrifice maybe two intelligence points without really worrying about it too much. But the point is, is try to always hover around that 90 spot. Now, why is that? What that number indicates is that every single time you do a roll, that roll is going to have a 90% chance of hitting, or in this case, 92% chance of hitting. Now, weapon rolls range from one to five. So that means every roll has a 92% chance of hitting. Now, I'm not gonna get into the weapon itself, how that impacts um, how much damage you output. It's pretty much trying to figure out how to maximize getting a perfect roll. And that's, that's the important number here. So the weapon you see on the screen here has three rolls. And what that means is every single time I roll, there's a 92% chance of hitting that roll. So if I do 92 for each slot, in order to get a perfect roll, there is a 77.8% chance that I'm going to get that perfect roll. Now, there's also additional um, abilities that you can do within the weapon itself. So as you can tell that there is a, there's another roll that takes five rolls and then the other two um, have three. Now, the one thing to pay attention there, there's also an accuracy measurement. So that plays a part into it too. So for party cleanse, it gives me minus five accuracy. For party calm, it gives me 10 accuracy. But let's just look at the rainstorm since it's a minus 10%, that number drops significantly more. So when you drop that by 10%, it lowers your chance per to a perfect roll to 37%. Okay, I want you guys just to hold on to these numbers to get an understanding as to why focus and the rule of 90 is so important because what happens when you use focus? How does that impact your roll? So your very first roll 
is 100%. But on top of it too, each subsequent roll, so each roll after that, increases each roll by 10%. Now in the case of having 92 and having three total rolls, since I'm at 92 and adding 10%, we can't go above 100%. It automatically makes it where each roll is at 100%. So in order to roll a perfect roll, it's 100%, and that's using one focus point. Let's think about it in the case of where you're actually reducing it by 10%. So your first roll is at 100%. Then your next roll, or 92, it gives you a 71.6% chance of now rolling a perfect roll. And if you think about that, the reason why I'm breaking down the focus and how it works is that using one focus point and having your base offensive stat at 90 in general will almost always give you a perfect roll unless there's some type of um there's some type of nerf within the ability itself but usually because that ability is really strong so like in this case it does 13 max damage but it does it to the entire group so it does a total of 39 damage and it makes, if you're able to do a perfect roll, which perfect rolls are so important in this game, that if you can do a perfect roll, it also makes the entire um, enemy team wet. Now again, off of one focus point, a 71.6% chance is decent for a perfect roll. So the power in your base stat at being at 90 is very important. When are you willing to drop below that 90 threshold or just lowering your armor and resistance in order to get something else in the game that you feel is valuable. What is valuable to sacrifice those numbers? So applying the roll 90 to offense, the two armor stats, and how focus works, it gives you a good foundation to move forward with the decisions that you want to make with selecting different weapons, armor, and such. So what do I mean by luxury stats so those four stats are vitality speed luck and evasion now let's talk about tier listing these additional stats and what stats would you be willing to sacrifice in order to get either vitality speed luck or evasion and we're going to go with the ones that are not worth it first then there's one maybe then there's one i would strongly consider impacting your base stats First thing is luck. Luck is by far the worst stat in the game. It does have some impact with certain skills and you having a better opportunity to be able to use those skills, but luck is literally a luxury stat. I would not sacrifice anything just to get luck. And just to kind of show you guys what you can do though with luck if you really want to, one of the encounters, the Dark Carnival allows you to use luck. Now, it is helpful to have a high amount of luck to be able to use the Dark Carnival, but there's a simple way you could do this, is I will hold on to certain items, gives me 15 luck and a 10% gold multiplier. 15 luck is a lot of luck, but I find luck to be so pointless in this game. As you can tell, I will get into completely different videos about, um, about different skills that you can get and why I feel distraction is a better skill over having, you know, 14 or 15 luck. But what I do is I hold on to these. And then what I'll do is before I go into an encounter, I'll swap it out, give myself additional luck, go into the dark carnival, then leave it, swap it back out. The second one is going to be probably somewhat controversial, but hear me out on how vitality works. Your vitality allows for you to have a certain amount of HP. How this works is this is based off of your level and then it's 10% times by your level times by your vitality. I have actually checked this for myself and the numbers actually aren't correct, but I'm just going to use this because it's really close. There's, it's just off a few HP points here and there, but I want to kind of show how this number works and why I feel this particular stat is not worth to increase. First off, right out of the gate, the one thing that you will tell is that your HP is highly dependent on what level that you're at. 
the real number to look at is I am not going to pay, pay attention to the base HP and base level. It's how much impact your vitality has. And so if your vitality is a function of what level you're at and how much vitality you have, then that's really the number that you're looking at for why, the, why vitality matters. Let's for the sake of argument. Right now I'm going to use the Dusa character, which has 75 vitality. For looking at it as 10%, let's assume he's at level 1 right now. What that gives you is 7.5. HP and I believe that's rounded down so really what you end up getting 7 HP now if you increase your vitality by like let's just say 4 let's let's be generous and let's just say 5 you then would increase your HP to 8 so 5 vitality points to increase 1 HP so think about that the amount of additional vitality you need to put to have it have a major impact is kind of negligible at the lower levels so if you're putting that many that much stats into your vitality to gain one hp you're better off just having one extra armor because that blocks multiple hit points so at the very beginning of the game vitality is garbage now let's look at it from the level we're at now intense pretty decent level i'm nearing the end of this game so what this does is this allows you to have 75 hp let's increase your vitality to 80. what does that do it increases your hit points five more so for pretty much each point of vitality you increase, you gain one HP. But again, if you're only gaining about five extra hit points, aren't you better off by having two extra armor, two extra resistance, and you block that every single time you get hit? So this goes back to how good is vitality? It's not good at all. It's a stat that is a luxury stat, and if you can get it, fine but I wouldn't go out of my way of getting it. Now let's go into the next stat, which is speed. Speed allows you to do pretty much, in essence, three different things. One is being able to move around the map. Two, it allows you to like ambush or leave a fight. And then the third, how many turns you get within a battle. Now, the first one, moving around the map, isn't really that important because if you go back to my five tips to stay alive you don't really want any of your heroes venturing off too far because once you go too far it makes it too hard to play as a team you end up having a larger opportunity to die so then speed is not worth it being able to ambush and leave a fight i don't find that to be all that important the only time to really consider it is if you have a really low amount of speed and your hero has is constantly not able to fight because everyone else fights in front of them and will even skip turns because it's so low. This usually does not occur unless you're looking at your strength hero. He is right now at 55, which isn't terrible, but the problem is, is with the strength hero, in order to increase strength, there are boots that lowers his speed. This is why you talk about the 90 threshold. Since I'm at around 92, I don't think I really need to be that high. I'd be willing to swap out boots to give him to where he's not taxed on speed. You do this every once in a while, I would not sacrifice main stats too often for speed. It's just not worth it. So then on to the last stat, evasion. This stat is by far the best luxury stat in the game. Even the game categorizes evasion as a form of defense. The most important thing is staying alive in this game um, because losing one of your lives is so detrimental and you get so very few of them and it's hard to gain them. That avoiding getting hit altogether is by far the most important thing that you can do. Hence why I would strongly consider increasing your evasion at the sacrifice of armor 
resistance or even your offensive stack. 